From the American College of Financial Services, it's time for Next Gen in 10. I'm Ross Riskin, chair of the Next Gen Advisory Task Force, and for the next 10 minutes, you'll be joined by our hosts and guests discussing topics relevant to up and coming financial advisors. Hey, Next Gen, it's Alana Phillips. I am here with Joe Fink today. He is a wholesaler with Lincoln Financial Distributors. Thanks for being with me today, Joe. Thanks for having me. I am excited about this conversation. So you're a wholesaler. We did talk about that on a previous episode. And I really want to get into the conversation I asked you to be a part of today about professional dress and grooming in financial services. It tends to be a very conservative, very generic sort of style. And our audience can't see you, but I can. You've got a beautifully tied bow tie, a very unique style, Joe. So I'm going to start with asking you, do you have, and if you do, what is your fashion philosophy? Well, that's a good question. I, to be honest, I never really thought about having a specific philosophy when it came to fashion, but early on in my career, my mentors would constantly ask, you know, what is your brand? What is your brand? In sales, you have to have a brand. What's your value proposition? How can you stand out among your peers? And, you know, you could answer that in many different ways, but when I think about that question, one thing I always think about is, you know, how can I be memorable? And to me, that seemed easy because starting in high school, I started to dabble in the world of bow ties, you know, over the years, my mom and, you know, then my dad and my stepmom, and then, you know, grandparents, siblings were gift me bow ties. It's like my grandmother, you know, she once said she loves giraffes. So then after that, every birthday, every holiday, we would get her something giraffe related. So same thing now, almost every other gift I get is a bow tie, which I do not mind. I love it. <laughs> I have close to over a hundred bow ties. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> maybe excessive, maybe. <laughs> a little, I've said the same thing about tequila and I don't have that many bottles of tequila. So maybe I'm doing something wrong, but wow. Well, bow, bow ties are a little easier to store, I think, than hundred <laughs> bottles of tequila. <laughs> but anyways, as I was embarking on my career, I kept asking myself, okay, well, you know, how and in a, a work appropriate way, can I be memorable? And it hit me. Well, I have all these bow ties that I love to wear. And I decided, you know what, from that moment on, I stopped wearing any long ties to work. And I just committed 100% only wearing bow ties. This is serious. You know, my oldest sister got married last year. And my brother in law, he was ordering matching ties for all the groomsmen. And he and this is a big deal. He gave me special approval so that I could wear a bow tie. It had to match the same color, you know, palette, but I was able to wear a bow tie. And that's how serious it is. <laughs> that is very serious. It's sort of like, you know, Dolly Parton, we've never seen her without, you know, the hair and the makeup and the whole thing. So we will not see Joe without a bow tie. I think of myself very much like Dolly Parton. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> so do advisors remember you then? Like, is this a thing because you're out and you visit, you know, advisors, at least you did maybe virtually now, do they remember you because of the bow tie? Very much so. And I, I had hoped that would happen, but I didn't know for sure, you know, once I actually got out in the field. But the funniest thing, you know, I moved to Minneapolis. I was in the territory for maybe one to two months. You know, I, I started to make my introductions around the territory and I was in a branch. I remember having a conversation with an advisor and she said to me, you know, Joe, your competitor was just talking about you the other week. And I said, really? What did he say? And she said, well, you know, he was, he was talking about how, you know, bow tie Joe over at Lincoln and, you know, talking about whatever he had to say. And, and it seemed to be a little bit in a derogatory manner. I, I, I don't know for sure, but <laughs> I, I was both slightly offended, but also extremely flattered because I hadn't even met this person. I had never met this person before yet. I already had this reputation of the guy with the bow tie, which out of all potential reputations, not the worst reputation to have. <laughs> yeah, there are worse things to be known for, for sure. So, because I think this is a thing for next gen folks coming into the industry. They look at our industry. We are not sexy. We are not fun, at least from the outside, when you look at our professional style. So you've taken that and really made it into something that is fun and is memorable and is a part of a brand. I think that is such a great thought, Joe. So we're gonna take a quick break and we'll pick up right where we left off. Deliver financial planning for every person and every need through our chartered financial consultant education program. Find the tools and skills you need at theamericancollege.edu slash chfc. 
Get best-in-class preparation for your exam with our CFP Certification Education Program. Start your journey toward this valued designation at theamericancollege.edu slash CFP. Well, now that we're back from the break, let's pick up where we left off. I know, Joe, you know, as a, a woman in the industry, I tend to wear hot pink. I've got hot pink on today. I, you know, I do floral stuff. I do, I have sparkles, you know, it's a whole thing. And, and I've coached a lot of young folks in the industry who want to show their style. They have received some of the most negative feedback from other folks in the industry for doing that. Have you received negative feedback on your piece of flair here of, of your bow ties? I've got to say, I've gotten some mixed reviews early on as I was developing my brand. I definitely got some feedback, you know, oh, kind of the connotations of the bow tie, which I'm not exactly sure what those are. But, you know, I, I remember, you know, I had a couple of folks say, you know, you really probably shouldn't wear a bow tie. You know, I looking at it, I can appreciate the sentiment because it's tough getting started in a career, which is, you know, relationship driven, right? These folks, they want us to be successful. Right. You know, when you're getting started, you kind of they at least the way they position it is you want to be a blank slate. You don't want to give a potential customer an advisor any reason not to want to work with you. And so similarly, I got similar feedback, you know, don't talk about potential boyfriends. Don't you know give people anything that could alienate them from working with me. And, you know, I've constantly been sitting with that. Right. Because it's tough. And, you know, as someone early on with maybe not the strongest level of confidence, I had that negative self-talk, which said, Joe, you know, you got to mold yourself to be as palatable as you can to as many people as possible. But I am very, very, very fortunate that I, I think I have one of the best managers in the industry. He is one of the best pieces of advice that he has ever given to me. And it's this quick little saying that I repeat over and over and over again. It's some will, some won't. Who cares? Who's next? It's just that reminder that, you know, there will be people who don't want to work with me, whether it's my mm -hmm. personality or you know, my sexual orientation or how I dress. And that's okay, right? To be successful, I can't be everything to everyone. Some days it's harder to admit that, but for the most part, I can consistently remember that, you know, hey, be true to myself and I can find those people who do want to work with me. And I think that's what's so valuable and important. Can you say the, the mantra again, Joe? So we've got that. Yeah, by mantra, some will, some won't. Who cares? Who's next? Yeah, I think that's so beautiful. And it is hard. I, again, I think our industry, when you come into it, there are well-meaning folks that do want to give you that understanding that you may walk in the door and because of how you look or because of what they think you like or don't like, they may not want to work with you. And so there is a balance there of you want to be palatable and you want to, you know, I, I wish I could say it wasn't about being likable, but a lot of our industry is about that connection and the relationship and the like ability, but not at the sacrifice of yourself. You've clearly articulated that message to us. So if you had to pinpoint it, do you think our industry will evolve to the point of being a little more fun and authentic in our literal fashion style of, of how the industry looks? I hope so. I hope so. And I think so. I think the way the work culture has been shifting over these last few years, I think the way we're working from home, I think that has allowed for a lot of flexibility and more opportunities to share a little bit more of your own self with others. So I, I think there is a movement towards a little bit more individuality and expressing yourself and the way you dress and the way you uh, conduct yourself. So I'm, I'm hopeful for kind of what's to come. Yeah, I hope so too. And I, I think, you know, there's so much of a push for advisors who are your clients to differentiate themselves, to work with niche clients. So do you find that you gravitate towards those folks that already, you know, are clearly in that same sort of mentality with the mantra? Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I mean, I, I think a lot about the clients I work with and, you know, no advisor's the same, you know, they're all so different. And when I think of some of my favorite folks I work with, they're very different, right? Very different, you know, on so many different levels. But I do think it's the folks who really know themselves and they know who their clients are. I think those are the folks I just really gravitate towards. Hey, Joe, I'm one of the producers of the program and I have a question. Do you think there's a more buttoned up and a more conservatism that exists in the industry because we're talking about money 
That's a really good question. And I think that is definitely a, I don't want to say that's a stereotype. I do think going into the business, that was my expectation. I will say though, I've been surprised at the advisors that I work with here in the Twin Cities in Minneapolis, how I really met people all sides of the coin, both sides of the coin rather. And so I do think there is a sense that, you know, there's a little bit more conservative energy (laughs) in this space, in this industry. It's been interesting to meet and engage with people who, who kind of have all these different types of beliefs. It's interesting because I think, Joe, I think you're right. Like, but money isn't buttoned up, right? As much as we think like, oh, money's very serious and we're managing people's money and this is their retirement and their livelihood. Like money is so emotional and it's so connected to who our clients are from when they were children and their other relationships with humans that like to say, because we are uncomfortable talking about money and we have made it an uncomfortable topic instead of addressing it and talking about it like a normal thing we've made it very serious so that we understand how to talk about it and we're definitely breaking out of that which is kind of cool to see and does our dress reflect that joe i think so i i think our dress we're not taking ourselves so seriously right we can relax a little bit and i think that's a perfect example of ways that we can we can talk about money and still kind of have fun with it. Yeah. And just to be yourself and who cares who's next. I, I think it makes so much sense. So thank you for one, being willing to sort of trailblaze in our industry with your style. And I know what to get you for your birthday now <laughs> with the, the bow tie. So you do make it easy, but I think it's such an important message and something that our industry hopefully will continue to evolve and see we can be professional. A bow tie, I think is very professional and we can still have fun and show our style and really be our So thanks for being willing to share your story with us, Joe. Thank you so much for letting me tell it. For more episodes, visit our website at theamericancollege.edu slash podcasts. This has been Next Gen in 10, brought to you by the American College of Financial Services.